Hi and welcome to another Power Soccer training video. In this video, I'm going to give you a few drills to help you improve your chair control skills. Although it isn't a very exciting topic, it's crucial for the development of other skills. For example, chair control comes before ball control, and I think that's pretty obvious. A big thing with chair control is knowing the chair perimeter in relation to where you sit. This first drill will help you with that. It's an improved version of the basic cone weave. Set up three pairs of cones in a staggered pattern like in the picture. Each pair should be one chair length from the other, and the width of each pair should be no more than two chair widths. Drive through the cones, turn around, and go back through the other way. Drive as fast as you can in order to simulate game speed. I'm doing this with cones for the sake of visualization, but I recommend using objects that you can hear or feel when you hit them. Folding chairs work well, just as long as it's not something you can break. Don't worry if you keep hitting the cones. That just means you're getting closer and closer to knowing your chair peripheries. This drill also improves your actual control of the chair. It requires many small, accurate movements at high speed. One thing I love to do with this drill is make it competitive. I do this by recording the time it takes me to go through the cones and try beating the fastest time. This added competitiveness is why I like to do this at team practices. The next drill is the left middle right cone drill. Set three pairs of cones in a line like shown. The individual pairs are about a chair width and a half, and each pair is one chair length away from each other. Set yourself two chair lengths away from the line, and have someone point or say which gap to go through. Go through that gap, and then back up straight away, roughly two chair lengths again. As you're backing up, have the person point to a different gap. Keep repeating this for no more than two minutes. This next drill isn't really a drill, but more of a tool you can use during a game. I see many players who are backing up, and then they stop, turn around, and then go forward. This wastes time in a game. Try doing it in a fluid motion like this. And practice this on a line so you can better gauge the timing of when you need to stop turning. It's important not to overturn, as that also wastes time. I encourage doing this with your team, and try having your coach whistle when to go and when to make the turn. Use this tool in situations where a ball gets past you when you're in reverse. Turning around so you can see the play developing is more efficient and safer than blindly backing into it. Yeah, it's a small fix, but it's a mistake that's easy to correct. Great players know their chair so well it's almost like an extension of their body. What I mean is that it's never a surprise when they hit a ball or another chair unless they didn't see them in the first place. But they use every part of their chair, whether they can see it or not. Oh, did you get that? Hi, and welcome back to another Power Soccer training video. In this video, we're going to discuss shooting with the front of your guard as a far wing. I know this seems very specific, but learning this skill translates well anywhere on the court. And many points can relate to passing with the front, but that'll be for a later video. So in many ways, shooting with the front is the equivalent of a header in able-bodied soccer. You can really only redirect the ball, and you can't add much power to it like a kick can. And there are situations where you can't kick the ball, but you have to head it. And that's why this skill comes in handy. Instead of calling it shooting with the front, because that takes forever, for this video I'm going to combine the words chair and header to get cheddar. So what can you do with cheddars? The most obvious thing is that you can be more accurate. It's much easier to hit a small gap with a cheddar than it is for a spin kick. And one thing that's very difficult with a spin, but easy with a cheddar, is looking at where the defense is. Your vision is conveniently where you're shooting, so reacting to the defense's location is much easier. One thing that may not be obvious to players starting out is that it's often useful to take speed off of a shot with the cheddar, and this comes in handy when it's too late to adjust to defense's positions, where they're already there to defend the shot. So when you know scoring isn't possible, the next best thing is maintaining offensive possession. It's hard to maintain possession when you blast it right into the defense's hand. And that's what I do here. I wasn't in a good position to take a shot on the right post, so I give something that my teammate has a chance with, by taking speed off. 
One important thing with cheddars is that you're more ready for the rebound, and you're already heading the right direction for following it in. And unlike a spin kick, there's no backswing to recover from. So when do you follow it in, and when do you stay in cover an area? Here's a great example of when you should follow it in. Goal. Most of the time, you should follow it in. That is, don't stop the instant you hit it. Train your eyes on the area of where the ball is going. Anticipate the angle that the ball is likely to bounce off the defender, and don't strictly get tunnel vision of the ball itself. Don't follow it in if a teammate is closer. There is no point. You're just covering a lot of the same area. Okay, so how can you practice cheddars? My go-to drill is the three-gap drill. A lot of people know of this, but simply it's a gap on the left post, middle, and right post. Make the gaps as small or large as you can, and give yourself the right amount of challenge. Better to be on the safe side of difficult as you're given more precise feedback on your adjustments. Whenever I can, I have a teammate kick the ball in, as a person rolling the ball bounces off the guard differently. I also have someone call out a gap mid-kick. This prevents me from cheating towards the harder gaps to hit. This drill trains you to shoot in a game, as defenses, at least smart ones, don't leave the same gap open every time. More often than not, the gap is moving during the kick, which is what this next drill trains you for. Hitting a moving target. Same setup, but without the cones. Kicker kicks, but here's where the twist is. Someone rolls a ball along the goal line when the kicker kicks, and you shoot for the rolling ball, and that's it. One thing that's important is to roll the ball at different speeds and times to simulate an unpredictable defense. You'll find after a while of practicing that there's not a lot to think about with cheddars. There's simply things you need to be aware of. Things such as where the defense is and where they're facing, the direction of the ball, and the spin of the ball. And that's why there's patterns on the ball. It's almost never a solid color. Cheddars aren't the most flashy way to score goals. But I guarantee if you improve this skill, you'll score more goals. And just because it's not flashy, doesn't mean you won't end up on ESPN.